In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at some of my favorite iPad apps, uh, the ones that I've been using over the last year. And I do change the apps that I use from time to time, but for the vast majority, uh, I've been using them for years. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ray and I'm a technology consultant. And I help SMEs get the best out of technology by helping them implement business automation. App number 10 is Instapaper. So this is a great app for saving interesting content as I find it on the web. Uh, and it's there so you can pick it up and read it later. As you come across interesting web page uh, or pretty much anything that you think you need to save, you can just click on the share button and save it for later. And one of the good things about it is that you can also share video. So great for bookmarking some YouTube videos, something I kind of use quite often. And Instapaper puts it in its own section marked videos. App number nine is Procreate. I'd heard great things about this app uh, and even went as far as taking lessons on Skillshare. Uh, and it looked really great, but sadly, I've not really spent that much time beyond that original course uh, in, in terms of learning how to use it properly. I, I know that my artist friends use this all the time, and I know that there are a few architects who also use Procreate. Um, so if you're the artistic type, definitely worth checking out Procreate. App number eight is Books. The Apple Reader is probably my most used reader. Uh, for some reason, I always seem to end up picking up books in the iPub format, which is native to Apple, uh, more than I do in Kindle. Uh, I, I'm such an avid reader, I probably get through 50 or so books a year. Uh, I like the clean interface of iBooks and all of the Apple apps uh, as a general rule. Um, albeit I've had a few issues with iCloud Sync this year, so it took me a while to get my libraries to sync up between uh, my iPad. App number seven is the Kindle Reader. Since the iPad is my number one reading device, it really wouldn't be complete without the Kindle app. I still love my Kindle Reader. It's probably unbeaten in terms of devices where you can read in the full sun. But for the majority of the time, I am indoors, so my iPad will do as my main reader. Uh, again, I love the Readwise integration with the Kindle app. Uh, Readwise basically takes all of my highlights and emails me a selection of random highlights from all of the books that I've read every evening. So kind of good to be reminded of all of those books uh, and some of the more important content. App number six is a new app called Story Shots. Uh, I picked up a discounted version of this. They were offering a discount for new signups. And whilst I can't really say that reading some of these shortened versions is anywhere near as good as reading the full book, uh, if you're not sure about a particular book and you wanted to flick through a few pages virtually, um, then Story Shots is pretty good for this. You can read a short summary, you can li listen to an audio narration, and for some books there's even a video to go along as well. App number five is Notion. And I have this kind of multi-use thing with Notion. Uh, as, as I've learned Notion, I've built pages, uh, I've built web pages, I've built databases, I've pretty much built everything with Notion because that's what you can do. I primarily use it for coming up with ideas for my YouTube channel and sharing some of that content with my content superhero Lucy uh, so she can comment on my drafts and we can share the schedule for posts and so on. I think if I were starting afresh I probably would use Notion as my number one productivity app um, but I have made investment in some of the other apps uh, and with Notion, you can pretty much do anything, but once you've kind of invested in something, you're a little bit loath to move. So I use Notion as a complementary productivity app. App number four is Evernote. And despite the software problems uh, recently, uh, Evernote is probably my most used note-taking app. Uh, I've also tried things like uh, Ulysses and Drafts, 
and I still use Apple Notes from time to time. But Evernote really has contained my life since about 2008. Uh, and with that sort of investment in it, uh, it's kind of difficult to give it up. Uh, I know there's still some missing functionality with the recent changes, uh, and there are problems on other platforms that infuriate me no end, but they do seem committed to re-architecting the software and putting all of those missing features back in again. So I'm going to stick with them a little longer and just see how things go. App number three is Fantastical, and if you have multiple calendars like I do, working with multiple clients and multiple businesses, um, you'll want to see everything, all of your appointments in one place, and Fantastical is just, well, fantastic for doing that. It was a little bit more expensive than some of the other calendar apps on the store, but once it is set up and you have everything just tweaked just right, uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. It just simply works. There's a natural language interface for when you're typing in appointments, uh, and it also syncs across mobile devices and platforms. And it's, it's just one of those things, I know it's more expensive, but it's worth the investment. App number two is Todoist. And for those of you who know me, you'll know that I love Todoist. Uh, I've used pretty much all of the task managers uh, available on the Mac and other devices over the years. And Todoist is the one that I've really stuck with the longest. I love the filters. I love the natural language input. Uh, I love the way it syncs across devices uh, and apps on mobile as well as the computer. Uh, plus, it also has Zapier integration, so I can automate a whole load of stuff as well. Really, there isn't any more that you can ask for from a task manager, uh, and that's the one I'm going to stick with. App number one is Notability, and this is my number one note-taking app on the iPad. Um, really, it takes advantage of the Apple Pencil and gives you that real writing experience which essentially took me away from you know, the paper journal and the paper notebook uh, and moved onto a device instead. I really love the process of writing. Uh, you know, that's where the notebook came in, but on the iPad with the pencil, uh, you kind of get this back again, but it's so much easier to share and to exchange information on the notes that you've taken. This is my go-to app for taking notes in meetings and it's, used whenever I do my interviews with my startup teams. Uh, that is my main point in terms of collecting the information. And then of course I can share it across the platform when I submit my interview notes. Um, I've even managed to get Notability as a whiteboard app on a Zoom call uh, by logging in as another user. Um, and it just makes things so much easier to explain when you can draw pictures. The only downside is that it doesn't sync with the Mac. There was an app a while back that was taken off the App Store. Uh, you used to be able to sync your notes across the two, but really it kind of stopped working and they've actually taken it off the Mac App Store. That is my top 10 productivity apps. Thank you so much for watching.